Anti-racism is a core aspect of professionalism from the ACGME, which calls for discussion-based frameworks to support clinicians in anti-racist communication and trust building. The Presence 5 for Racial Justice is an emerging framework intended to support Black patients in getting great care. Presence 5 for Racial Justice incorporates human-centered design and community-based participatory research with input from patients, clinicians, previous literature, and non-medical professionals. In this module, we will be focusing specifically on anti-Black racism to provide strategies that target the unique experiences of racism affecting Black patients. However, our hope is that these strategies are generalizable to a diverse group of patients. The Emergent Presence 5 for Racial Justice, P5RJ, practices include 1. Prepare with intention by reflecting on identity, bias, and power dynamics. 2. Listen intently and completely without interruption, and listen deeply for the potential impact of anti-Black racism on patient health. 3. Agree on what matters most by having explicit conversations about patient goals, treatment comfort and consent, and referral planning. 4. Connect with the patient's story. Acknowledging socioeconomic factors, influencing patient health, and focusing on positive efforts. And 5. Explore emotional cues by noticing and naming patient emotions, and considering how experiences with racism might influence emotions. In alignment with community-based research, this CME was developed by a community advisory board of Black patients and clinicians who treat Black patients. The following scenario was developed by those patients and clinicians drawing on their lived experiences. In this video, let's consider the practice of agree on what matters most. As a reminder, the Presence 5 for racial justice practice of agree on what matters most includes having explicit conversations about patient goals, treatment comfort and consent, and referral planning. Consider the following scenario. You are reviewing patient chart information for a black 37-year-old woman with type 2 diabetes. Recently, her A1C has increased and the chart says that the patient has been a no-show non-compliant with treatment. However, this does not match your experience of this patient who has always been very on top of her diabetes. You wonder if that really is the whole story. Consider how you navigate the conversation to identify the patient's most pressing priorities and also communicating your concerns about her blood sugar. Hi, Alice. How have you been? Oh, I'm all right. Let's talk about your diabetes management. Have you been able to keep up with your medications? I do see in your chart that you weren't able to make it to your one-month follow-up after the insulin prescription. To be honest, I've had a tough time focusing on my health. I recently lost my job and have been so overwhelmed because of that. That's why I missed my follow-up too. Reflect on what you can offer the patient to help address the challenges she is facing and provide the support she needs for her health. I can imagine how much stress you must be under because of that. What's important now is that I get you the care that you need. How can I start to help you with that? Yeah, I really need help getting back on track with my medication. The stress from that on top of losing my job has caused me a lot of anxiety. That's completely understandable. Let's set up a plan to help you manage your diabetes and give you one less thing to worry about. You've also mentioned some stressors that might impact your emotional health, and I'd like to recommend some low-cost counseling and support group options, if that's all right with you. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Are there any other priorities that you would like to address in this visit? Let's talk about the evidence for the domain of agree on what matters most. Clinicians have been shown to vary in question asking, diagnostic decision making, symptom management, treatment considerations, referral to specialty care, and interpersonal behavior based on patients' racial identity. Children who are black or from other minority population groups are more likely to be evaluated and reported for suspected abuse compared to white children. This can result in inappropriate referrals to Child Protective Services. Black patients report that clinicians use less positive talk or talk that is information giving, partnership building, or participatory decision making. Black patients also report worse outcomes on nonverbal communication, 
respect, and support from clinicians. To incorporate your patient's priorities into the visit, think about these practices. How can you and your patient be on the same team? Here are some examples. Avoid biased assumptions about your patient's top priorities, goals, and values. Include the patient fully in decision-making to build trust and prevent stereotyping. Consider offering appropriate referrals to interdisciplinary staff when indicated. Improving care for Black patients requires clinician self-reflection, personal commitment, and institutional support. Incorporating these presents five for racial justice, evidence-based strategies into your clinical practice is one way in which you can make a positive difference in the lives of your Black patients.